Today we're gonna to show you some design doodler tricks for creating appliques. We're not gonna do a single applique or two separate appliques. We're going to merge appliques so one is underlapping, one's overlapping, and how to make them look nice and clean. If you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time we release a new video. Now before I start doodling, I'm going to actually set my hoop in place. So I just click on the hoop icon and I have it preset for a five by seven hoop. So this will show me the area in which I'm gonna create my applique. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the 3D on and because it is grayed out, that way you'll see it actually be generated. And then I have my three kind of viewing tools, my property tools, which are my palettes. I have one that's actually called properties and I have another one that is called sequence view. And I can, you know, close these or open them and usually I try to minimize the space, but I'm gonna keep them open so that you can see all the changes that I'm making along the way. And then within my widget, I also have my widget here, which has all of my brushes or my stitch types. And if I click on the different brush types, I can see that there's all different types of stitch effects and we're gonna choose the one that's marked applique. And when I am in applique, I can control the width of the stitch, I can control the density, or I can control how I create my appliques with the different shapes and tools within the actual presets. So I'm gonna leave this at a three millimeter applique because I do think that three millimeters is suitable for an applique. I have a standard density and I'm gonna use the actual freehand mode and now I'm ready to get started. But before I do, I'm gonna come down to the bottom corner here there's three little dots on the right hand side and when I click that I have menus that come up for viewing my design and there's also one called settings. Now within the settings in the first general box that opens up this is where you can go in and fine tune all of your tools, your brushes and you can control and preset all of your widths, densities and stitch lengths but you can also toggle between metric and imperial but there are all these uh, default boxes, boxes that are checked and one is actually called auto close shape and if you have this auto close shape uh, checked you will create an object and let's just go in here choose a dark color turn my 3D on and when I click on here if I start to draw a shape I can go all the way around this shape and when I get close to the end, it will automatically close that shape. And I can see that it did generate three different colors. So there's three color stops in here. And when I select this, I can see that within my properties, I can control the width of the stitch or the density, the inset value if I want it a little further out or closer in. A great way to control or fine tune your appliques. I can control a lot of things, but there's this one here, which is my um, placement line, my tack down, a zigzag stitch, which would be great for underlay when necessary, and a border. And the border you can switch between your satins, your blanket, uh, or you know, that's basically like an E stitch border, or your motif. So I'm going to keep it on satin for this, but if I turn off my border, you're going to see that there is just two outlines there. And that is uh, the outer one, the darker one, which is the first color, that is my placement stitch. So it'll do a single run around the outside for placement. And then the next one, which is the tack down, is inset from that so you know it's going to grab if you're cutting on the machine. And it doesn't go around just once, but it goes around two times automatically. So it's going to hold that in place. If I click on my zigzag as well as my sew border, then I will get a zigzag stitch that'll hold all those appliques together and then my finishing stitch around the outside. And that's always the way it kind of works when you're creating shapes. But I do have a little trick to show you because when you are using this settings tool and you click off the close applique and I do it with that box unchecked, then when I go to create something, it's very important that I always remember to create my shapes in a clockwise motion. Like the hands of a clock, one, three, six, nine, that is the flow that I want to create my objects in. So if I'm doing a little piece like this, and I want that to be my applique, then if I look at this, and let's turn off, again, we'll go and choose this one right here. I'm gonna choose this and I'm going to come here. I'm gonna turn off my border. You're gonna see that it does it properly. I have my placement and I have my tack down and the placements on the outside, the tack downs on the inside. 
only when you have that box unchecked, if you decide to change the rules and go counterclockwise, then this is what's going to happen. It's going to create the object, but it's going to end up doing that shape in the reverse order. So if I select that object now and I go into my settings and let's turn off the sew border, you're going to see now that they are reversed. So you do not want your placement on the inside and your tack down on the outside because your tack down needs to hold down your material. So I just wanted to show you that anytime you're doing this style of applique where we're going to be doing two appliques, one's going to be under, one's going to be over, you'll want to make sure that you do your open end applique. You start it and continue in a clockwise motion. That way it's going to do each of those steps in the proper width of the stitch. It's going to do your tack down first a little further out, sorry, your placement uh, first a little further out, and then your tack down will be inset so it's going to hold that material in place. So I hope that makes sense to you, but I wanted to make sure we covered those fundamentals before we get into our design. And I'm gonna do something that is a little bit themed to the time of year if you're watching uh, this you know, months from now, you don't know, but Thanksgiving is just around the corner. So I'm gonna do a drumstick, and I'm not talking about a drumstick like this, I'm talking about a Thanksgiving drumstick which has a bone and a meaty area. So we're going to use two different colors. We're going to have the bone underneath and the meaty area over top and create a two-step applique and show you how to do this with the tools that I just showed you. So we'll just select everything that's on the screen and we're going to delete it. So now it's deleted. I'm going to choose a color that will be friendly for the bone on the drumstick but I want to choose something that I think you can see a little bit as we're actually creating this. The 3D is on, so you'll visually be able to see it. I know that it should be under my settings. The auto close applique is still clicked off, so that is good. And now I'm just going to create a little drumstick here, hit the center of my widget, and I'm going to create a line here, put a little indent for the drumstick, and come straight down like that. And there is my drumstick area right there. So that is my first piece, and if I turn my 3D uh, off, I can see that there actually is within my settings, let's select that, there is actually the uh, placement, the tack down, and the border going around the outside. So that is my first step done. Now, what I'm gonna do is the other area of the design, because that is an open-end applique. This part, I wanna make sure that it is closed, so I'm gonna go back to my settings. I'm going to close the shape now, and I'm gonna choose a different color, and I'll just choose a brown color for the outside, and I'm going to click off of the area that I just created, go back into my settings right now, and I'm going to start maybe right here, and I'm going to create this and go all the way around like this. And remember, I can always edit this afterwards, but I'm gonna go like this, come around, and now I have a closed shape right there, and there my piece is done. So now if I look at this, and I'm just gonna call it up to full screen so that we can see it. Let's pan over a little bit just so you can see it on the screen. At this point, all of my pieces are done. My two appliques are finished. If I do want to ever go clean anything up, I can click on an object, and I can go in here, and I can adjust some of these points so that I can Move this one like that, that cleaned up that end. The rest of it looks pretty good. I can come into this applique right here. So let's click on this bottom part. And it's pretty clean for the most part, but if I ever do want to come in here and just clean up some little pieces, I can very easily just uh, you know grab things, move them around. I can choose my start and stop points on my design, make sure that there's nothing that's traveling around the outside. And that looks pretty much done. If I don't like the shape, of my drumstick. You can always go in and change things. So I can grab this one here and I can move this one to come down a little bit more like that. And I can move this one over here. I can grab a handle on this so that I can move it inwards and I can move it up here like this. So there's really all kinds of fine tuning you can do to any design. And now the design pretty much looks done. So let's bring it to full screen so I can see it. Turn this one off. And if I bring it to my uh, larger mode, let's go to one to one real quick, and let's bring this in to zoom it, just so we can see it on screen. I'm gonna go now to my slow redraw, just so you can see all the steps, and we'll go run this on the machine. But here is my slow redraw, 
which I have set on the bottom of my screen. You can turn it on or off. And when I hit the play, you're gonna see that the first line it does is my placement. Second line will tack it down. It is an open end, so I'll just cut around that area, leaving the bottom part open. And then it's going to do the finishing stitch. And then after it does that finishing stitch, it will continue to do the second part, which is my placement and my tack down for that part as well. So now everything's pretty much done and I can take this to the machine, run this uh, design off and it's that easy. So mission accomplished, we want to wish all of our American friends a happy Thanksgiving and we'll see you next time.